We'll be uh, singing verses 1, 2, uh, and 4. Two canons. Our next song will be number 716, 716. Walking alone at
Please bow. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this other day on earth you've given us to come here and worship you without persecution. Thank you for uh, letting the elders and Adam have us be able to come up here and do this. And please help anybody who is sick or chose not to come get better and come next time. Lord, help us to take this lesson and apply it to our daily lives and help us get closer to you. And thank you for all the rain and cool weather you've given us lately. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now turn with me to 645. 6, 4, 5. We'll be singing uh, verses 1, 2, and 4. On a hill. song will be number 517, 517.
The next song will be number 231, 231. Onward, rejoicing, I tread my sway. I will be reading from Matthew 5, verses 3 through 11. Matthew 5, 3 through 11. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you revile and persecute you. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my, mis- for my sake. Good evening. Well, I'm afraid it's not going to be a long, drawn out one this evening. But my lesson title is A Code for Christians. We all need a code to live by, something that guides us, a set of rules we can live by. We also need a little reminder of the basics, you know, Christian 101. Like the Israelites had their Ten Commandments, students have a code of conduct, and we as Christians today have the New Testament. But today I'd like to focus on the Sermon on the Mount, but more specifically, the Beatitudes, which started off, which are found in Matthew 5, 3 through 11, as read in our hearing. Let's look at the background of Jesus' life at this time before we dive in. In chapter 4 of Matthew, Jesus had been tempted by Satan, he's called his disciples, and went about healing all manners of diseases, and acquired a great multitude of followers, and these are the people who Jesus is preaching to in his Sermon on the Mount. 
<clears throat> his Sermon on the Mount. The verses that make up the Beatitudes contain two halves, a condition and a reward. So let's dive in. Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what can we take from this verse? Well, the poor in spirit. Let's start with that. Many think that phrase means the humble. So when we break it down, this verse means the humble will get to go to heaven. But what does it really mean to be humble? One, de one definition is having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. That being a little complex, I'm going to put it in my words. Humble is bringing yourself down low enough to where you realize that you're part of a bigger picture. A good example of humbleness is Joseph. When he was put into a political position, he was never flashy about it. But he kept his faith in God and was continually blessed because of it. Our next beatitude is 5-4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The key word here is mourn, and it means to have great sorrow over. I think, I think that this verse means that if you're troubled in this life, you'll be comforted in the next. The story of Lazarus comes to my mind when I think of that. Uh, his story is recorded in Luke sixteen twenty five, And Abraham said, Son, remember that in thy life thou receivest good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. We should all strive to be like Lazarus, who even in his darkest hours mourned, but at the same time he stayed faithful to God. <coughs> Next beatitude is Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Again, we're going to look at the key word, which is meek, in this one. And meek means having or showing a quiet or gentle nature, not wanting to fight or argue with other people. I know an elder is hands down one of the best examples for this verse, as illustrated in Timothy 3.3. 3. And that reads, They are not given to wine, no striker, nor given to filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, and not covetous. This is just one of the many verses for the qualification of, of the elders, all of which prove this point. The next one we're going to look at is Matthew 5.6. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. How cool does that sound? If we strive to do right, we will be satisfied with eternal life. I don't know about you all, but I would like to be filled. The next one we're going to look at is Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The parable of the debtors, which is found in Matthew eighteen twenty four and 25, comes to mind in this case. In this parable, a servant owed his master 10,000 talents, but the master was merciful and forgave the debt. But the one who was let slide got off the hook and wouldn't turn and turned around and wouldn't forgive another man of his debt. And he didn't just not forget him, he threw him into jail. And some other servants of the master saw what had happened, went to the master, and it wound up that the man who was originally forgiven of his debt was thrown into debt was thrown into jail as well. All this to say, show mercy and be compassionate to others or don't expect mercy on judgment day. Our next beatitude is Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But what does it mean to be pure in heart? Well, the Greek word for pure is katharos, and it means to be clean, blameless, and unsustained from guilt. This is basically what good character is, right? So that's the first half of the verse, and the second half is pretty much self-explanatory. They shall see God. We should all be... Strive to be pure because we all want to see God. And the next verse we're going to look at is Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. For me, making peace is one of the most difficult parts of Christian life. When confronting any agitating situation in life, it's important that you don't blow your stack. Whether you take a, whether you take a walk, kick a wall, whatever you've got to do, if you want to be called a child of God, you have to hold your tongue, watch your temper, and keep making peace. 
The next two we're going to look at are Matthew 5.10 and Matthew 5.11. They're similar, so I kind of slumped them together in one. And that, from Matthew 5.10, reads, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.11, which reads, Blessed are they when men shall rival you and persecute you and say all manner of evil falsely against you for my sake. Now, as for being rivaled and persecuted, I think we're fortunate to live in what's called the Bible Belt, meaning everybody here is in some shape or fashion a Christian. So we haven't really been persecuted like the first century church, but as far as people speaking evil against us, it's a daily struggle. But Jesus willingly endured persecution and being rivaled against to its full extent at Calvary. People beat him, cursed him, and made a whole trial full of false witness against him. I couldn't imagine how Jesus must have felt at that time while people were shouting out false things about him and being so cruel. But that's a whole sermon for another time. We just need to remember that heaven will be our reward if, if we just stand up for what is right. So, there we have our code, our road map. We have to humble, we have to be humble, meek, merciful, peacemakers, pure in heart, and want to be righteous just because it's what God wants us to do. Follow our road map and code accordingly, and the results will not vary from what Jesus has promised. So, to close it all up, let's think about the lottery. Not to advocate gambling at all here, but... How good would it feel to win the Powerball Lottery? How good would it feel to win the Powerball Lottery? Yes, it would feel good for a while because we've got money, we can have worldly possessions, and all that other great stuff. But eventually, the money runs out. Eventually, our nice things become not so nice and old. So, it's important that we put our name in the bowl for the ultimate reward which God offers us. So, if you're a Christian and you've fallen away or struggled, please come back today and have your name in the pot and get the best reward you can possibly ever win. Oh, do not let the word depart.
you have not taken the Lord's Supper today, come sit to my right and you will be served. Our next song to get our minds focused on the Lord's Supper will be 312, I'll Be a Friend to Jesus. That's 312. And we'll be singing the first, second, and fourth verse. They tried my Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins. Please help us to take this bread in a manner pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. Please forgive us of our sins and please help us to not sin. Please, thank, please help us to take this fruit of the vine, which represents your son's blood, in a manner pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eight twenty-four. I'll fly away. Some glad morning.
Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, thank you for this wonderful day that you give us. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for letting their elders just let us come here today and let the young men do this as we do at the end of every month. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Please forgive us of our sins. Please just help us to have a good week, dear Lord, and please just bless us and be in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh,